Welcome back to the GSMC Sports Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. We're just talking some Kansas City Chiefs, the dynasty that they are. Now we are going to be sticking with the Chiefs, but looking more so ahead about what is next to come for the Chiefs is the three-peat in play, the just about impossible. This is something where, you know, I have talked about it myself in terms of the significance of a repeat alone. Travis Kelsey also during Super Bowl media day was really harping on the importance for him of becoming a repeat champion, adding their names to a very refined list in NFL history as far as teams that were able to accomplish back-to-back Super Bowls. And if you had any doubts on whether or not Travis Kelsey would be coming back, I think that He sort of gave us a little bit of an insight on it last night, talking about how excited he was for a chance to go out for a three-peat. Now, this has never been done in the Super Bowl era. There were a couple instances in pro football history in the 1920s, 30s. I couldn't even fully get into that, but as far as the... NFL's history in the Super Bowl era, it has never been done. And I think that the Chiefs probably have just about as good of a chance as they could ask for. Now, again, it's a lot projecting out to next season already. The Super Bowl literally just happened last night. I'm sure at some point today or tomorrow, we'll get the articles talking about the way too early Super Bowl odds for next season as I'll actually look it up on the side right now to see if the odds have been posted. It looks like CBS Sports here put out out an article this morning where the Chiefs are actually second in odds. They are plus 650 behind the 49ers, but, you know, very interesting. I'm sure we'll get all sorts of content about that looking forward, but as far as the Chiefs directly... Before worrying about, you know, making the Super Bowl itself first, they're going to have to figure out their offseason. They are in a pretty good position financially. Now, they do have a handful of different players that will be expiring contracts that they're going to have to figure out whether or not they want to re-sign. And now this is where I was sort of talking about they took on this defensive persona I don't know if that's really the right way to phrase it, but the identity of having a great defense and controlling the game that way, they are going to be potentially losing some of the starters on defense. They have seven upcoming free agents that played over 50% of snaps this season. Specifically on that defensive side, it is Legereus Sneed, Chris Jones, Willie Gay, Drew Tranquil, and Mike Dana. And then, as well, didn't play 50% of the snaps, but Tershawn Wharton was also a pretty impactful player during their playoff run as well. So that's a lot of guys that you are going to have to figure out what you want to do with in the long term. They do have one offensive starter that played over 50% of snaps that will be an expiring contract. That is left tackle Donovan Smith. I'm sure that knowing Mahomes and To be fair, I don't know all too much about Donovan Smith off the top of my head, but seems like someone they're probably going to prioritize signing to, you know, keep their franchise intact. And by franchise, I mean Patrick Mahomes. But again, they have a good amount of money going into this offseason. They are 13th in the league in projected salary cap space, according to PFF, which is pretty solid they are fourth in the least amount of dead money so the contracts that they do have on the books they're at least putting to good use they don't really they aren't dealing with any of these bad contracts that are holding them back as well everybody that they're paying they are pretty much using which i think is a very big piece you obviously want to maximize the value of every contract you have on the books and you know it's sometimes can be a little difficult to do so when your quarterback makes up just about a quarter of your cap space as a whole. But 
They've been able to do a really good job around the edges. Also, again, helps the fact that your quarterback is able to elevate the play of everybody else that he's around with. But this is where it sort of gets interesting into what do you think their priorities are going to be for the upcoming season in terms of in the upcoming off season, I should say, of where to address. I feel like there's a lot of receivers in the upcoming draft. I know that the draft a lot of the time can be somewhat of a crapshoot, but and you can't fully rely on that, but they got a pretty good amount out of Rasheed Rice this season. And again, it's not like he was incredible in the Super Bowl, but he really started rearing his head and becoming a more effective player for this Chiefs team as the season went on. I think that another year of experience is only going to help. You have Travis Kelsey, who is going to be 35 next year. He's the third oldest tight end in the league, which just, again, sort of goes to speak to tight ends don't typically have the type of longevity that Travis Kelsey has been able to maintain. And I think that to some degree in comparison to other Hall of Fame tight ends, it has to do with a little bit of the fact he's not so much on the offensive line, maybe taking as many bumps as bruises as other blocking tight ends do more so. And his game, I feel like, is a lot more sort of speed-based than pure physicality. Whereas you saw, you know, the big tight ends like Gronk really get attacked their sort of lower extremities. Where Kelsey, I just feel like he sort of has the finesse where it's not that he hasn't taken any hard hits over his career. But the finesse with him, I think, is beneficial to the team on the field and actually the play style helps to keep him going. Now, he was dealing with some injuries this season, and for that reason, we sort of saw a quiet second half of the year for him. So I wouldn't be surprised if that is really the case again. I feel like they probably are going to want to, you know, establish him, and he himself, from a pride perspective, probably doesn't want to sort of be an afterthought for entire seasons at a time. But I think that he probably also has his main focus on winning the Super Bowl again. I think that he has a very good understanding. Weird moment with him last night that kind of got swept under the rug of him shoving Andy Reid on the play that Isaiah Pacheco fumbled in the red zone. It seemed like he was mad that he wasn't in on the play, but that was very strange to me just because there really wouldn't have been much of a difference. And obviously, Super Bowl, heat of the moment. You got a lot of emotions going on. But, you know, a potentially dangerous play for one of the oldest coaches in the NFL. And ultimately, again, it's not a big deal. I myself don't want to blow it out of proportion. But that was a very strange thing that went on that we came out of timeout and, you know, the CBS crew was like, whoa, look at this. And then we just never heard anything about it for the rest of the game. I'm sure Kelsey and or Andy Reid will touch on it at some point in the coming interviews for them. But, you know, I think that Kelsey probably can just be their anchor a little bit. He probably doesn't have the legs under him necessarily to be the full workhorse that he was. But that's why if they can do a better job of putting the other pieces around, at least for regular season. I mean, it's, I think that the chiefs got the criticism they deserve during the course of the regular season, leading the league in drops, leading the league in penalties. I believe their offensive line did just a lot of stupid stuff with this chiefs team, but they obviously were able to come around in the end, which is Great for them. Great they won the Super Bowl. But I do still think these are things that they should be looking to address. Now, like I mentioned, the receiver class in this upcoming draft is very talented. There are more than enough weapons that you could potentially address there. I'm curious how much they're going to look at that defense because this isn't really a bad position. I know that, again, definitely have to address some of those things on the offensive side in the coming year, but they were able to get it done in the end. 
because they have Patrick Mahomes. And, you know, draft capital alone, again, I think is one thing, but it's also a little bit hard to rely on that much youth and, you know, I don't I don't want to I don't want to bring it up right now but like if you look at the Ravens who I know they have some whole other issue going on with him but Zay Flowers it really felt like the lack of experience there and the lack of maturity sort of led to some of the on-field decisions the taunting the diving for the goal line and the fumble you know it's it can be difficult putting these young kids who have had so much success in their lives to sort of take a little bit of a back seat in these big moments and you know the Chiefs have been able to do it with the leadership of Kelsey and of Mahomes but how much do you really want to put into that I do think that it's interesting if you go back because I was looking back on I think the hardest adjustment was transitioning from Tyreek Hill to whatever else they were going to get. They understood the importance of Kelsey. They understood how much money they were going to be coughing up to him and to Mahomes that they didn't really have the financials to go and pay him as well. So they end up trading him for a variety of different picks. They get Trent McDuffie. They, you know, package some of these picks to with to trade with the Patriots in which out of that deal, they get Trent McDuffie, an all-pro cornerback, and they get Sky Moore, who was, you know, kind of quiet this year, but helped contribute to their Super Bowl last year, I would argue. And then they also use some of those picks to draft or to trade for Kadarius Tony as well, who was a healthy scratch and a little bit of a disaster this season. But people forget that Tony was impactful in that Super Bowl. He scored a touchdown. He had a big punt return. And, you know, there's plenty of talent there for him. I'm not going to talk too much about him right now. I don't want to be too negative on him because I think that there's a chance that he could see some sort of a career revival. I just don't think that the Chiefs is going to be the place for that. But that being said, ended up being a decent usage of the pick. Maybe they could have gotten someone that was a little more reliable for them. But again, he did what he needed to in the big, the biggest moment to help them win last year. So you really, in my opinion, can't criticize them too heavily over that move alone. So again, they're going to have this cap space and they're going to have defensive pieces probably on the move. Chris Jones, if you remember, now it seems like forever ago, but he actually missed their first game of the year with a holdout situation because he wanted a contract. He ended up getting... 10 plus million to tie him over for the rest of this season. But I'm still curious whether or not Kansas city and him are going to see eye to eye on bringing him back. I honestly feel like he could probably be on his way. Now he's been the defensive centerpiece really for the past two super bowls. He was incredible again yesterday in um, the big game. So you know, he's going to get paid this offseason and going the franchise tag route and just trying to play that game again. I feel like the Chiefs can probably put their money and attention towards other things. While I do think that Chris Jones is a monster, I think that it, I think it may be time for them to part ways. Now, I'm very interested in Legereus Sneed and their linebackers here because Sneed, yes, they drafted McDuffie. And he has been phenomenal for them. But McDuffie is a little bit more of a slot corner than an outside guy like Sneed. Sneed has been really good. Didn't necessarily put together his best performance, I don't think, yesterday. But, I mean, still, he is an all-pro guy himself and is extremely talented. So, I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see the way they pick and choose going forward. But... I do think that the Chiefs have a lot of potential to run this thing back, not just off of the Patrick Mahomes, Andy Reid, Travis Kelsey combination there, but I think that they have the money that they're not in quite as much of a hole as a team like the 49ers, and they can sort of retool in various ways. Now, it's going to take hitting on some guys that 
might not be quite as easy and we'll see but I think that it is very much in play for them at the moment I think that them being second in Super Bowl odds is pretty much accurate interesting that the 49ers are first though considering they are not in quite as good of a situation when it comes to salary cap so we will be getting into them be getting into Kyle Shanahan their head coach when we come back for our final segment so stick with us we will be back with the final segment just after this <laughs> 